view. I'm not saying that's the Torah's view. Yes, absolutely. And even if he's married, because according to the Torah, he could have two wives, but according to the Torah, it's an abomination to be with a man. Exactly. Okay, but uh, the question would be, what if he was with a married woman? And did Aishas Ish, right? Which well, you're, not even allowed to, yeah. you're not even allowed to do at gunpoint, right? Mm -hmm. So now we have a ball game, mm -hmm. right? Now mm -hmm. we can talk. <laughs> that would be more of a question. Okay, go ahead. I think I'm done. Oh, okay, very good. All right, now I just want to um, answer Sylvia. Mm -hmm. She says, I know that anything goes once you're married, right? Because we established that mm -hmm. according to uh, the Rambam, according mm -hmm. to the Ramah, anything goes in the marriage, uh, you know. But let's see, what's permissible before marriage? You want to know what's permissible before marriage? Uh, a conversation. A conversation on I am. You know, I like, am. <laughs> before marriage, halachically, we, we're all supposed to keep what's called shomer nagia, which means right. that men and women, men and women, do not touch until they're married. Yeah. And you guys want to look for an example of the shomer nagia life? Then look no further than me. Okay. Well, we, we got some interesting things here. Uh, not permitted at all. Think flat out. If your orthodox is premarital sex permitted, I thought it no, wasn't. It's, it's not permitted at definitely all. Definitely not. Not permitted. I don't think. Judaism says if you sleep around with a shiksa, your soul will be condemned. So it's almost as bad yeah, as it's Kabbalah, probably. Yeah, I don't. Know, I don't know what that is. What What if he cheats on his wife with a married man? Is that a triple threat? Cheats on his wife with a married. The married part. The it's all it's all mutually exclusive. It's not going to change anything. But it's a cute question. Uh, uh, um, if he cheats on his wife with a man, that's not called cheating on your wife, uh, And if he's married, the man's married makes no difference. But being with the man is bad. And that would be the worst part of it is being with a man. Yeah. Uh, so wait, you can't even kiss your betrothed. Correct. Correct. Definitely not. Why did the Kabbalah come about? Because Madonna needed something trendy to, to get involved in. Okay. Because the Jews were going through a tough time in medieval Europe, and when people are going through a tough time, they, they fall into fantasies. Like That's why conspiracy theories are so dominant in black life, because many blacks have you know, leading lives of losers, and so conspiracy theories are for losers. And uh, Kabbalah is like some elaborate conspiracy theory, and it's for losers. What the hell is that? Kabbalah started with the Rosh B in 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 uh, two thousand years ago, right? In Eretz Yisrael, the Arizal was in Eretz Yisrael. It's an it's something that that's been with us since Mount Sinai. It was given Mount Sinai. It was uh, carried generation after generation orally. The Rosh B took command to put some of that together, uh, in the co codify it, if you will, in, in the Zohar. Uh, other people got involved. The Aris all, you know, wrote some down. And it's considered a, the high, the most highest secretive end of the, uh, of the oral Torah. And it's primarily so complicated that most people who learn Torah never really get to it. It's like after, you're supposed to do it after you've mastered the rest of the Torah, simply so that you can understand it. And you can't understand it unless you already have a strong Torah foundation. Right? So that's what it is. Well said. Now, the Mitzvah is permitted to enter the Israelite camp in his first stage of cleansing, and he no longer contaminates an entire building merely by being under its roof. Now, this is something I identify with because I often felt like when I walked into a shul that I was contaminating the whole building just by my presence. <laughs> you, uh, you have like these, um, these uh, paranoias, like you feel the force field of certain things. And, and, and then you or you could call it spiritual sensitivity or paranoia. It's paranoia is what it is. And it's social anxiety. I walked in the door, it's like, oh, I just ruined everything with my presence. Oh, dear me. That's called social anxiety. Uh, take Prozac for it. Go ahead, next thing. Holiness protects ethics. Disciplining people to constantly go against their desires is good training for making righteous people. Most of what you want is bad for you. Language pollution leads to bad behavior. It breaks down moral standards. It desacralizes language. We need a dimension of the transcendent in our lives and we become shallow. Would you agree, Rabs, that uh, most of what you want is bad for you? Absolutely. In fact, 
That's, that's how we're designed. When left to our own devices, and we don't follow what the Torah says on everything, we don't think like according to the Torah, mm -hmm. you will end up doing uh, the opposite of Torah every time. Yeah. Or almost every time. You will uh, choose what feels right and what feels good to you. And the way that God sets it up is he's going to set up that the always the tastier, more uh, alluring, sexier thing is going to be the thing that's the wrong thing. So left to your own devices, you will do the wrong thing almost every time. Yeah, I don't spend a lot of time like lying in bed and putting on soft music and like wishing I could be in yeshiva. Like, like normally when I just like lie in bed and just like kicking back and put on a little music and I don't generally think, oh, I wish I could be studying Gomorrah right now. What do you what do you what do you think of instead? You studying some chick named Gomorrah. Think about like some of the conquests that I've had and kind of like replay them in very minute detail. Conquest. Conquest, you know, where I've conquered, overcome, taken, laid siege to. It, it very battle-like. Yeah. Conquest. Yeah. I, I re like Joe Biden is going around like the college campuses saying, oh, college campuses need to do more to combat sexual violence. And he says the phrase sexual violence like it's a bad thing. Like all sex has this, an element of violence, and, and great sex has a lot of violence. Now I think it should all be consensual, but like sexual violence, if it's consensual, it totally rocks. I understand. <laughs> wow, you know what? You went almost a whole hour without giving us your whole sex life. You know, so I'm impressed. Boy, this is a slow show. Okay, next thing. Tame means death oriented, and toho means life oriented. So there's a couple of big concepts from the book of Leviticus. Think about all the rituals at the Oscars. People dress up, they kiss the little golden idols. So, you know, so too religion has rituals. Like, like I, I, oh, I thought your point of that was going to be that the Oscars and Hollywood is, an, is a form of idolatry. I thought that's where you were going with that. Well, well that's probably true too, but uh, let me tell you, I was dating this chick and she was hot. Here we go. <laughs> and we went to the opera at her invitation, and okay. so I dressed up, I wore a suit when I went to the opera at her invitation. Okay. And then we were kind of struggling with what to do about Judaism, because I was an Orthodox Jew, and she hated Orthodox Judaism, and she hated Judaism generally. But she was hot in bed. But she was hot in bed. So, I thought, let's compromise, let's go to Beth Am. It's a conservative synagogue, let's, let's try it out. And so we talk about going to Beth Am, and she, like, she emails me and says, is it okay if I wear jeans? And I go, yeah, would it be okay if, if I wear jeans, you know, to the opera with you? And then she got really pissed off at me and we never oh, went. Oh, that's very good. That's very good. Why would you dress up for an opera but right. you wouldn't dress up for God? Right. I like that. Like, why would, if she went to the Oscars, do you think she'd wear jeans? No. She'd re well, we don't want to see any women in shul with the dresses they wear at the Oscars. Probably not, yeah. Probably not. But if it's a reform or conservative, sure. Oh, yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> so you don't but, you, but your point is that how much money you're willing to spend on your clothes. Yeah, and how much effort. And yeah. how you're oh, like, oh, yeah. look at these, these you know, wonderful that rituals. Point, yeah. and it just happens to be that they're not sneezed. There's a story about uh, um, the secular Jew, like, sees this, sees this man wearing black, kind of sitting over a... Uh, the holy book and swaying back and forth and so the secular Jew goes, oh, you know, why are you still stuck in, stuck in the Middle Ages and you know, why do you still believe all these superstitions and you're an embarrassment and the guy looks up and says, I'm Amish. Oh, right, right, right. And the secular Jew, oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, no problem, you're, you're no problem. As long, long as you're not one of, not, long as you're not one of ours. Oh, that's yeah. lovely. Yeah, I've heard that one. That's an old one. All right, let me see what's going on in here. Makes sense. Oh, boy, oh, boy, boy. Kapoi started with Abraham. Oh, that's, that's fair enough. You could actually say that it started with uh, Adam Arishon wrote um, uh, 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 It started with Adam Arishon. It started with Adam. Kabbalah actually started with Adam. If you want to cons talk about all of it, say, say for Yitzira and all that stuff that came down before, came, started with Adam. Okay, uh, what if he cheats on his wife? Marry a man. We, we already did, did that. that. What if he came? I know, I'm going through it. Calm down. 
How come there are so many women in Kabbalah? Uh, because they're terribly 